So the next thing that we implemented is the next step of supporting SLSO. So the induction and ongoing check-ins last for their first term. We've then implemented a mentoring program. It's building on the induction and it, the aim is to continue for the first three years of an SLSO's employment at Monero in line with new teacher support received in New South Wales. Again, we're only just over a year in, so we're seeing how it all evolves. Why do we do it? I've said it builds on the induction and it provides continued support, continued education and learning. And it's also helping to us build the professionalism of SLSOs, how we're seen by others. It's also definitely for me personally, creating a mentoring program is a response to the fact that we SLSOs are so commonly untrained when we're employed and then not provided that training and guidance during our, our employment. Mm. We don't have much knowledge. We don't know how to support people. And then, you know, well, is that really the best approach for our students? If, you know, how can anyone in any role, anywhere, perform it effectively without being trained or guided? So our mentoring strives to be a start point of training for SLSOs. And again, aiming that not just to provide a bit better support for students and staff, but to help us as SLSOs feel valued, feel supported, informed and reassured. Yeah, I think one thing about that, although that's like a formal process i think there's probably important just to note the informal mentoring that goes on yeah. like, like yeah, corridor mentoring i guess you could call it yeah. you know where it does you don't have to wait for your allotted time yeah you know, we can you know, rachel's always there to help um yeah no they and they're really really proactive they've been fantastic they find me they ask me they use teams or that they will ask any and more so more and more that's involved supporting each other as well it's really really fantastic i'm learning from them as well it's absolutely fantastic so what do we actually do in mentoring so look, on the screen, you've got some examples of some questions and things that have come up. I mean, one of very few, um, I don't think Nathan's realised yet that I've actually used his pets pets for names in the questions to, to represent you. Um, <laughs> so Alan will be stoked. Alan will be stoked. Um, so look, it's fortnightly, a timetable period where they come to me. Okay. Now, obviously, if something urgent crops up, something like an emergency with students, then we detour, but these timetables, it is there. It's not just going to get changed for no reason. What we do, we come, we sit down, and we, first of all, I do a check-in. I say, hey, how are they going? How have the last two weeks been? And that can be in reference to anything, any practice that they've been learning from the previous session that they're trying to implement, any difficulties with that, or general difficulties, general questions. It might just be they've just had a couple of tough weeks, okay? It's about the check-in. And if that takes a whole session, that's the priority. So if they bring questions to me, we go with that and take as long as it needs. Sometimes I may need to defer it to the following session because I might say, look, I'd really rather go away and think about this properly before I respond. If that's not what we're doing for the session, we have a schedule of learning of PL about evidence-based practices and quality practices that we can implement in our role. At the same time, we often share experiences. I will readily share things that have gone horribly wrong for me because I think that helps them to understand you don't need to be perfect. I like to think I'm a really good example of that. Um, <laughs> and we also have a really good laugh, which is great. So it's, it's fantastic in that sense. So looking, this is a list of just, it's a snapshot of some of the topics that we have covered in mentoring. Ultimately, these all go towards building student independence, helping, making us focus on helping them to build skills. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty big list, but like we sort of focused on probably three of those really heavily. So which ones were they? Um, right. Look, I think one really, it sounds really simple and bring this one up because it sounds so obvious. The power and problems of proxemics and how to use them beneficially. I'm going to use an example I use in mentoring, but it's quite, ridiculous so if you go to the supermarket and you buy a tin of slso what's the picture on the label oh geez that's a bloody good question i mean i don't think i should say it no you probably shouldn't because i might have to punch you on camera yeah, and that yeah, wouldn't be good okay so most people have said to me an slso or an adult sitting next to a kid helping them with them work with their work and yeah okay that's part of the role but it's also part of the problem and that's how we talk about proxemics so we go through all sorts of understand of learning about understanding why to and not to be near a student the difference between standing or sitting near what it communicates how to use proxemics and non-verbal communication as well to actually support students whilst making sure they're still engaged is, is that also about you know we spoke on one of the earlier slides about that physical barrier yeah like trying to reduce that the mainstream yeah okay. yeah absolutely because i mean let's be honest if we're if, 
it, to, to all fairness to teachers, if you've got another adult right next to a student, you know, like this, why would a teacher feel they need to come over to an extent? I mean, it's, I totally understand that. Yeah. It can also obviously be slightly off-putting to other students. So that's a really simple one that we cover, but it's so important because we're never guided because what we uh, so often in society what we perceive our role to be is sitting next to a child and that doesn't help them grow it squashes their independence it squashes their confidence there's a place for being right with a kid but we need to be aware of how and when and why and um, things like that talking we look at scaffolding our verbal interventions so that we're engaging in open dialogue encouraging students to think encouraging them to actively participate in their own learning and try and come up with ways of solving their own difficulties by us giving small amounts of information or least amount first approach without actually telling them answers or what to think. We've oh, nudge you. I think that's had the mm. most impact of any of the I strategies yep. is yep. like pushing the kids to yep. think without yep. giving them the answer. Absolutely. Um, you know, Absolutely. And without all that additional prompting and mm. that cognitive overload that mm. comes with mm -hmm. you've asked a question that didn't answer, ask yep. another question. In a different way. Start yep. giving some examples yep. and then yep. all of a sudden like, uh, the kids yep. like, you know, yep. yeah, I'm absolutely. out of here. Absolutely. Know, so. yep. I think yep. least amount first has just been... Uh, like really just, important. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, an example of that is avoiding immediately correcting helping a student to asking a student questions to help them identify what they need to do. And I think of all the strategies is the one that's helped the kids the most, but it's the one they like the least. Oh, absolutely. Have to oh my God, yeah. yeah. Yeah, basically so. it very clearly communicates. And the, the wonderful thing is we're all doing it. So. And it was quite funny early on when sort of really pushing this and I was sort of overdoing it a bit to an extent to hammer it home. And one of the other SLSOs came to me and said she was really putting this in place and she was so pleased she was doing it and doing really well, really conscious of us like, yeah. But she's, yeah, but this kid turned to me and said, don't be Rachel. <laughs> but it was like, yes, go that's you for putting that's it in place. some solid advice it was. for that kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree so, entirely. They, they got an A, I assume, yeah. So. Oh, now, now, right, okay.